This is Ray D. Johnson. Many people ask me, and sometimes it's their final query in the world. Mr. Johnson, what does the D stand for in your name? The answer is Deathmeister. It was given to me at birth by a nurse. When the delivering doctor slapped my rear end, I instinctively grabbed his scalpel and stuck it in his throat. How brutal am I today? Well, three months ago, Sister Teresa offered to throw the switch herself if the state would strap me into old Sparky. Right now, the LAPD is working on 75 unsolved violent crimes. Unknown to them, 28 of them are mine. And believe me, I didn't leave behind any finger pointers either. Anyway, this show is designed to give you the rare opportunity to talk to a real live psychopathic killer from the safety of your own home. I'm brought to you this week by the good folks at Bill and Bob's Burglar Barn. And now a word from our sponsors. Hi, this is Bill. And Bob. From Bill. And Bob's. Burglar Barn in Baldwin Park. We have some great values, huh, Bill? We sure do, Bob. Like this shower detector gauge that lets you know when the little lady inside is alone and in the shower. Only $69.95. Bob? Bill, here's a nifty little item for the punk on his way up. A combination tire slasher and wallet remover, only $29.95. Ah, Bill, here's a dandy little item for you purse snatchers. A spray capsule of disorientation gas. Just spray it in Granny's face, Kuiper purse, and it'll be St. Patrick's Day before she'll remember what state she's in. Only $129.95 with two gas pellets. Bob? Bill, for the sicko with a passion for music, here's a Burglar Barn Red Light Special. A combination Walkman headphones with a rust-proof ice pick on a chain. Blot out those annoying screams, all for only $129.95. You'll find these and hundreds of other bargain values at Bill. And Bob's. Burglar Barn in Baldwin Park. No checks, no credit. Just cash. All money inspected on the premises. Open seven days a week, midnight to 6 a.m. Ready? Thank you, guys. Let's go to the phones. Ray D. Johnson. Uh, yes, I, I have a question, Mr. Johnson. Have you ever been in a lineup? Just once. The only witness I ever left behind. But while I was standing there, I was able to communicate to her through facial expressions and guttural sounds what would happen to her if she picked me. Uh -huh. It worked, and she picked the poor stooge next to me. He's still serving 15 to 20 in Chino. Thank you. Mm. Ray D. Johnson. Well, say, Mr. Johnson, has this ever happened to you? Mm. You you approach your victim, and you say, stick him up. But you done run off and left your gun at the house. No. Hmm. Well, has this ever happened to you? Hmm. You break into a house to violate a person, but once inside, you get sidetracked by a nightlight in the bathroom and end up staring into the thing for four hours and losing their orange. Has hmm. that ever happened to you? No. Hmm. You is a professional. I will say that, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Ray D. Johnson. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Johnson. I'm calling from a pay phone outside, so you won't trace this call. Mm. I was wondering, sir, mm. if you broke into a house and found a pasty, white, cowardly young man in an old wheelchair confined granny type, who is an invalid? Invalid. I invalid. Mm. Uh, who would you snuff? Both of them. I see. Uh, say, Mr. Johnson, mm. is it raining out? No. Okay, then. I just wet my pants. Bye. Well, we're out of time. I'll be at Bill and Bob's Burglar Barn this Saturday from 3 to 6 a.m. demonstrating my latest anti-dog device called the Ray D. Doggy Prod. And I'll be signing autographs. See you there. Of course, if I see you sooner, I won't be seeing you later. So super took Ron, tell them how they can get that catalog, will you please? All you have to do is send $246.18 to... Ron, there has been a price increase because of mailing and shipping costs. Oh, I'm sorry, what is it? What is it? $294. $294, cash, check, or money order. Send it to the Christmas Catalog, care of London and Engelman, 6430 Sunset Boulevard, Suite 418, Hollywood 90028. And in return, we will send you the exclusive London and Engelman Catalog. You can only get it here. You can only order your gifts through here. Gifts, great gifts. Gifts like... Busta Bunny. Yes, Busta Bunny looks, feels, and acts just like a real bunny rabbit. But Busta Bunny is another realistic computer toy from the makers of that darn duck. Oh, yeah. boy. <laughs> Simply give Busta Bunny to your child and tell him to be very careful with his new delicate pet. Then go away for five minutes. Because during those five minutes, Busta Bunny will automatically begin to limp regardless of what your child does. Even if he doesn't even touch it, Busta Bunny will limp. Then you return and administer a severe scolding to your youngster for damaging one of God's creatures. Then go away again. Because at five minute intervals, Busta Bunny will begin limping on both feet, 
show signs of a busted neck, and even simulate cut wounds and ooze fake blood. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. let me tell you, you and Dad can keep returning to the room and administer beating after beating after beating to Junior for mutilating this animal. Finally, Busta Bunny will completely dissolve, leaving only fur and blood behind. And of course, the only conclusion you can draw is your child ate Busta Bunny. Hey, hey. Then it's a simple process with that evidence to get him carted off to a retention center. Busta Bunny, also available in Busta Iguana, depending on your racial background. Only four hundred twenty-seven ninety-five. Oh, that's a great gift. Everybody should have a Busta Bunny. Oh, the new Leave It to Beaver, starring Jerry Mathers as the Beaver. Wally, Wally, wake up! Oh, what is it, Beaver? It's three fifteen in the morning. How'd you know that, Wally? You didn't even look at a clock. I have a digital time readout on the lower right-hand corner of my dreams. Oh. So what's going on? I heard something in the backyard. Huh? So I went down. I found something, Wally. What? I'm bringing it in over here. Okay. Here it is, Wally. Home. Gosh, Beaver, a retarded kid. Mm, I don't think so, Wally. I don't even think it's from this world. Gosh, better put a robe on it or something. It's 46 degrees out. How'd you know that? Lower left-hand corner. Oh, you got that too, huh? Yeah, plus news headlines at the top of the hour. Gee, that's... <laughs> What's going on? Oh, hi, Lois. Joe, your mother's here. That's not Grandma, Dad. We think it's from another planet, yeah. Uh, hard to say, Wally. For the first six years, that's what I said about the Beaver. What's all the racket? Ugh, where did you get that, huh? of twisted flesh. <laughs> Talk about your deja vu. That's exactly what you said in the delivery room when they held up the beaver. <laughs> no calls, noodle neck. Well, congratulations, beaver. Huh? You finally found something uglier than you. Yeah, yeah. You had to go into outer space to do it, but you got the job done. <laughs> <laughs> Mom said, can I keep it? Oh, that's just what I need. Another slimy mouth to feed. No! Ward, hit it in the head with the shovel and bury it. No, no Mom, no, no, no. Hey, no. hey, hey, hey. Maybe you boys are right. June, you know, uh, we could be sitting on a gold mine here. Yeah. You might be right. Hey, hey, fish face. Yeah, Dad? Not you, it. Oh. You play cards? Come with me. I, I want to take him downstairs and keep him busy. Okay. You know how to play poker? Five card draw? Well, don't get your hopes up, boys. Uh, somebody must want it, Mom. We said the same thing about the beaver. The only offer we got was 20 bucks from a carnival. So what happens? We take him down there, and the two-headed goat boy refuses to share a cage with him, and the deal's off. Is that why we didn't go on any of the rides? Oh! What? That, that came from downstairs. Let's, Let's go. go. Hurry. Stop. Hurry. Oh. Dad! You shot Darn right I did. He was cheating at cards. Sorry, Beaver. Gee. Yeah, it's too bad. He'd have made a heck of an Amway salesman. Well, scrape him up, Beaver. He's oozing on my carpet. Hey, look, everyone, his chest. It's glowing. Maybe he's going to come back. To... All right, out. <laughs> <laughs> Good shot, Lord. Oh, look at him move. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Good night. Gosh, Beaver. Jeez. Join us again next week for the new Leave it to Beaver. Hey, well, from the Los Angeles Times, this was... Uh... In the uh, Sunday edition, three weeks ago, <clears throat> James Brown wrote, Unbelievable. If there's anything better on radio, we haven't heard it. As a matter of fact, Wolfman Jack should drown himself in a hot tub out of shame. Thank you, oh, Jimbo. Oh, boy. Nice review. Just from the Herald Examiner being the non-flowery people that they are, mm-hmm. just put simply, outrageously funny. Yes, yeah, simple, to the point, direct, Herald mm-hmm. Examiner. Un- this was kind of unusual. We got a review in Fortune magazine. Uh, Dan Witherspoon writes, they are the AT&T blue chip stock of the disc jockey world. Thank you, Dan. Boy. I think you know what you're talking about, too. The magazine, the International Harvester Weekly. They do to comedy what our DL5 rototill does to an unplowed field. I cherish that one. That's good. I like that a lot. Gentlemen's Quarterly wrote, London and Engelman, hard radio what the Pope is to loose-fitting clothing. Well, that was a very touching right. one that uh, yeah. gentleman quote with him. Boxing magazine. Their show is as devastating as a knockout punch by Larry Holmes. They would have changed that, but that was written several yeah. weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, they, they had to do that. Uh, All right. Field and Stream wrote, Listening to London and Engelman is the same thrill as looking through the crosshairs of a deer rifle at a crippled moose. Boy, now think about that one. That's that's a thrill. That's and, pretty uh, heavy. We and appreciate being compared to that. I don't understand this one really quite fully, but okay. National Geographic says that their wit is equal to the relationship between the Malanomi tribe of Australia and their use of the land. No, I, I do. I, I, no, I, do you understand yeah. that one? That I, was, I, I couldn't get that one. That was a rewarding review. Rewarding. Mm-hmm. Valley Girl Monthly. Very simply, totally, totally awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. That's it. 
reviews from professionals. You make your own. horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. Tonto, not like being cooped up in white man's fagmobile. Well, we wouldn't be here if you hadn't hit your horse in the throat with your rifle butt. Mm, him foam up, get horse sweat on Tonto's spandex trousers. Then you just had to kneecap silver with your tommyhawk. Him look at Tonto with disgust. Well, I don't blame him. He'll be in the shop for three weeks. What you looking at, doofus? Uh, nothing. Mm. Now you leave him alone, Tonto. What beautiful white woman's name there? I don't converse with bloodthirsty savages. Mm, fine. Let's just just move on to neck rub. I'd sooner clean the ticks off a rabbit coyote with my teeth than to touch an engine. Engine? You say engine? Tonto, not engine. Him Sicilian. Frankie Tonto, my name. Sicilian? Hmm. We sell dope, pedal flesh, deal in wholesale pornography, and sweat a lot. Hey, d don't mind him, ma'am. I'm the Lone Ranger. That's Tonto, and we're crime fighters. You're not serious, are you, Shorty? A and who are you? Jeremiah Woman, Pinkerton Guard. Well, why are you on the stage? Because we're carrying 20000 in gold. That's why, Hoss. My. Hmm. Big stinking deal. What you look at, Wimp? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Bet you'd like to get your thieving hands on that kind of gold, wouldn't you, Redskin? Mm, me rather have hands around your mama's throat. Tonto. Keep talking cheap and you'll be bedding down next to your mama in one of those rat-infested burial grounds. Uh, Why, you... Uh, you're... Now, everyone, let's just settle down. It's going to be a very long trip, so let's just try and get along. Mm, fine with me. Good. Mm, you want something, Doink? No, no, I, no, no, mm. no, thank you. Hey, hey, wait a second. Mm, why we stop? Hey, it's a bandit! Oh, oh no. my! All right, everyone, throw down your guns. Driver, I'll take that chest there. Uh, wait. Uh, let's just do what he says, everyone. Do what he says. Mm. Throw, throw your guns down. Mm. Hey, wait a second. <laughs> Whose gun is that there? Mine. It's the most powerful East Coast catalog handgun on the market. <laughs> Say, is it okay if uh, we get out and stretch legs? Well, uh, one at a time. Uh, you first, engine. Sure, sure. Say, isn't that pelican booger on your shirt? A pelican booger? Mm. Oh! Get him, Tonto! Oh, get him, Tonto! It's safe now, everyone. Oh, how wonderful. Kick him in the gut for me. Sure. Uh, uh, uh. Hit him in the chest. You bet. Now break his spine. I, I think that's quite enough. Violent broad, Kimosabe. Yes. I'm so sorry I misjudged you, Angie. Mm, how about kiss? Uh, 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 what is it, Porf? Uh, that's my wife. You're kidding. No, that's, that's my wife. Tough break, Redskin, but I'll tell you what. We'll stop at the next town, and I'll let you slaughter a few innocent people. Oh, no. Mm, that funny. Here another one. What red, white, and lose a lot of hair. Tonto. Your mama with me on her back with an axe. <laughs> oh, Tonto, don't do that. Why, you Tonto. useless... No, 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 let's just everybody sit down. Come with us now for another outer space adventure aboard the SSLA, Battleship of Southern California, in another exciting episode of Space Patrol. What's going on up here this morning? Dad? I mean, do I or do I not have the right to drink all night and sleep all morning? Dad? But how can I get the 11 meager hours of sleep I need when you rat lip poop sacks are waking up the entire universe? Dad, come it, Dad! Hold it right there, Mr. Sailor Mouth. I will not tolerate that kind of vile profanity in my presence. My gosh, what have I raised? Yeah, yeah, you said gosh, you said gosh! I'm your father. I'm entitled to use vulgar language. Now I want to know what's going on up here. For your information, we have been locked in a deadly battle, Dad, with the pus nesters for over four hours. Out number 12 to 1, we have fought like Gordon the Fliffy and Snot Hogs. For your information, crudball, when you Goran the Fliffy and Snot Hog, it does not fight. It rolls over on its back and whimpers for its mud-covered little life. 
wife. Oh, you are still drunk. You, Mr. Wildlife Expert, are referring to the Scalabian gas goat, which, when injured, puffs out its stomach to look like it's pregnant in hopes of mercy. You two-bit idiot. That maneuver's performed by the Falafian unwed spinster squirrel, whereas... Oh, brother. Whereas the Scalabian gas goat, when attacked, launches its eyeballs out of their socket, which are filled with a deadly gas. Hence, its name. Well, I have a short response to that last bit of dreadful information. I can't wait to hear this. Well, here it is. Basically, it's this, Dad. Huh? <coughs> Why, you... Yeah. <coughs> 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 All right, hold on. Hold on. Stop it, Dad. Now, look. Ooh, Lukey, you're my... What do you want? Shut up. Look, look. We have been under attack for four hours. We are on the brink of defeat unless we do something quick. We have about as much chance of making it out of here as a Laploid sponge weasel against a pack of Ferithian dart dogs. A Ferithian dart dog would never attack the Laploid... Shut up! Uh, Shut up! It's your problem! Shut up! Now listen to me, Dad! Yeah, yeah. The pus dasters have just asked us to surrender. Surrender? Surrender? Surrender! I don't know the meaning of the word! Oh. To yield possession of, to abandon, to give up oneself as to an enemy, to cease to fight. Is that what it means? Yeah. I got no problem doing right, that. Surrender, then. Let's get this thing over. Open up a channel to the Puss Masters. Channel open. All right, listen up. <clears throat> this is Captain Skippy of the SSLA. We'll surrender under one condition. And what would that be, Captain? I have the responsibility of over 400 men and women on this ship who look to me for their well-being. Yes. Well... You can have all of them if you let me live. Oh, See, Dad. I could, like, uh, take the space shuttle and I can bug on... Silence! Huh? It is too late. Your ship is being pulled into our base by a locking beam. Locking beam? He's right, Dad. Uh, wh wh what, what'll happen to us? You and everyone aboard your ship will be used in painful medical experiments. <laughs> hold it. Hold it. What's going on, Dad? What is this, a high school production of Snidely Whiplash? Did Gil send this guy over here or something? Dad, it's just a dramatic effect that enables the announcer to do, find out next week what'll happen to these guys. Come on! Yeah, but this is really overdone, son. Dad, I mean, it's if, you, if you'd let him finish, we can get out of here and play some poofball. Uh, all on. right, all right, all right, all right. Go ahead! <laughs> <laughs> find out next week what'll happen to these guys. Join us again next time for another exciting episode of Space Patrol. Fat broad out of there with the bad back, ladies and gentlemen, and stand back for Dan Woman, Private Eye. Yeah, that's me, Dan Woman, Private Eye. And this is my city, Los Angeles. Well, this is paperwork day. I don't like it, but it comes with a job. Sure, I'd much rather be out in some dimly lit alley trading punches with one of the mob's gorillas. You bet I would. These two pig iron-like fists have dislocated, broken, and fractured more bones than Noguchi will see in a lifetime. Matter of fact, two days ago, an executive officer from Blue Cross came down here and begged me to wear padded mitts. Said I'd cost his company over $75,000 this year alone in medical claims. Well, enough about me and my dense pack-like fists. Let's go to the mail. <clears throat> Dear Dan Woman, Private Eye, you're like so totally awesome I could gag myself with a fireplace tool. I was like, you know, wondering if I could maybe hire you to... Here comes a festering gross out. <clears throat> to like track down and rescue my Bullock's charge card, which was... Wait. Oh, vomit a brick. Here it is under my totally gorgeous Rick Springfield album. I am, like, so embarrassed. Love you, Deb from Encino. I think that's what they call a valley skirt. Not my type. No, sir. I go for the sophisticated, worldly, intellectual woman. So when Dan Woman, private eye, is looking for some companionship, he cruises the fashion boutique-filled streets of Compton, California. I like to call the place Paris by the airport. <clears throat> Dear Dan Woman, private eye. This is to officially inform you that your presence is not requested on Thursday, November the 25th. I'm still getting cranberry stains out of the dining room curtains from last year when you slammed your fist into the bowl, squirting that red stuff all over the room. You're a sick piece of filth, and if you come around, I won't think twice about unloading a J.C. Penney's SX-4000 fully automatic into your face, chest, and groin. Signed, your mother from Pacoima. P.S. Your brother Earl wants to know what happened to his 78 gremlin. Well, Ma, 
Tell Earl the Blue Book price on his car took a definite move downward when I ran it through an orange Julius stand at 85 miles an hour. My gosh, what a gut-tightening thrill that was. Zero to 85 in under 26 minutes. And if the front axle hadn't have snapped, I'd have hit 90 in another 10 minutes. One more. <clears throat> Dear Dan Woman, Private Eye. Have you ever been neck-kicked, gut-butted, and then pamphlet-whipped by two teenage Mormons who then drug you through the gutter by your hair and made you eat the vinyl covering off their bicycle seats? Signed, Tommy from Van Nuys. Quit following me, Tommy. Sure, sure. It may have happened once last Wednesday, but they were on some sort of pain-free religious high after I mentioned that Marie Osmond could state with clarity the distinguishing scars, moles, and birthmarks on the entire starting defense of BYU. And I'll tell you something else. If that's an example of their sense of humor, it'll be a cold day in Ethiopia before I go hear their tabernacle choir in Salt Pond, Illinois. Oh, well. Someday they'll show up and beg me to get Donnie out of some sickness. And that's when I'll gouge them good. Because I'm Dan Woman, Private Eye. And this is my city, Los Angeles. Good morning to you, sir. How are you? Fine. Good, good, good. Nice talking with you. First of all, let me say congratulations. I'm glad you called in because yeah. I've been meaning to give you a call and congratulate you on the uh, award that uh, President Reagan uh, recently presented you with. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you. you may have, many of you may have read in Newsweek it's just the, the latest edition that seems that during the last space shuttle flight, they're having trouble with uh, maneuvering the craft. And at one point, I guess it was 2 in the morning, they called J.W. Specter at his beautiful palatial estate in Malibu. Yeah. And J.W. via the phone and his own computer hookup with NASA was able to correct the uh, malfunction. And the space flight was able to continue as yeah. planned. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, that was yeah. a matter of fact, you know, uh, when the president called to uh, give me my award, mm -hmm. I uh, gave him my dense pack idea. Oh, for the MX missile system. Yeah, oh, I'm, uh, real happy that he picked up on it and uh, decided to use that. That's great. That's yeah. great. Well, yeah. let's, let me ask you something. Uh, Have you got a big Thanksgiving plan? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. Uh, I'm going to do me some uh, charity work tomorrow, John. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, involving derelicts, winos, old people, you know, the uh, forgotten portion of society. Well, isn't that something? Yeah. Well, are you uh, going to be going around passing out turkeys and oh, no, uh, cranberry sauce? No? no. Most of those people don't have stoves, and if they do, they can't afford the electricity or the gas to keep them running, you know. Good thinking, yeah. So what are so, you going to do? Well, I'm inviting Neil Diamond, Barbara Streisand, uh, and Kenny Rogers and his wife to come over to my house for dinner. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to record it on Sony UCXS tape. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I'm going to take that down to the uh, scum slums of uh, Los Skid Angeles. Skid Rose area, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, if uh, they can't have a good time, uh, speaking of this uh, forgotten portion of society, I think at least they have the... Uh, the right. opportunity and the right to uh, hear a good time. So, and they, if they can't enjoy one themselves, they should at least be able to hear, hear someone one. having one. Yeah, that's yeah. dead gum, you uh, JW. That's just so giving of you. And when you record that on Sony UCXS, those filthy German-fested uh, throw-up covered winos, Derelict. those scummy human beings are going to are going to feel like they were right there in the middle of that uh, dining room table oh, yeah, with you and Neil and Barbara and Kenny. I'm sure uh, they're. By using the Sony UCXS, their mouths are probably going to water as they hear the food being chewed. You know? Probably is it because Sony yeah. UCXS, the ultimate cassette experience from Sony, the finest high bias cassette recording tape, will make that whole event come so alive for them that they could end up with some sort of dysentery problem. Yeah, yeah, that and uh, maybe a little indigestion. Indigestion, diarrhea. There, there's no telling what they're going to end up with just yeah. by listening to the finest tape. That's right. Well, don't get too close to them. And you remember the uh, Sony tape is edible and you might just kind of... Starring Jerry Mathers as the Beaver. Good game, huh, Dad? I mean to tell you, this is the most exciting game I've ever seen. I just love the Rose Bowl. Ted, this is Dallas and Cleveland from Texas Stadium. So what? You just love to point out every tiny, minute mistake I make and hammer away at it. No, I... That is one sadistic six streak running through your scummy little body, Beaver. I'm sorry, Dad. Here I am enjoying my Thanksgiving. I got my football game. I got my plain label unsalted peanuts. My generic brand scotch. All that's missing is my youngest son, little Petey. Or where is he? Ted, there is no little... Uh, little Petey's in Switzerland, Dad. Trying out for the Olympic ski team. Oh, all right. That, that's where he is. <laughs> He's going to be another Ty Cobb. 
Correct. My cob wasn't a skier, Dad. There you go again. Sorry. Do you feel better, Mr. Sato? No. Huh? Do you? No. What a vicious human being. Oh, turn that stupid game off. Look, honey, it's Hawaii. They're playing the hula ball, right, Beaver? Right, right, Dad. Shoot, <laughs> right. That's not Hawaii. Then the dad gum Beaver lied to me. You piece of unwashed filth. That's how he gets his sick kicks, trying to make us look stupid. No, really, I just was... What well, let's eat. It's ready. Good. It smells great, Mom. Yeah, it smells good. It smells like you drug a dead animal into the kitchen and set fire to it. I did, butt brains. Mom made a turkey, Dad. She did that 12 years ago, too. And the delivery room doctors are still talking about it. <laughs> Gee. All right, let's eat. Ward and Wally, I gave you the turkey legs. I have the breast, and who knows what the beaver has. How come my stuff is kind of green? But because you're eating Amway freeze-dried turkey hash. I'm not wasting this good stuff on your belly. Gee. All right, everyone, dig in. Looks like someone already did. Would you listen to it, Gripe? Hey, hey, how about if we say grace? Uh, that's not a good idea, Wally. See, your mother's Catholic, the beaver's a Hindu, you're a Baptist, and I'm an atheist. Instead, why don't we say what uh, we're thankful for? June, you start. Milltown. Okay. Wally? My family and my acne-free bod. Good, good. Uh, beaver? Well... The well? I, I don't understand him sometimes. All right, my turn. I'm thankful that God didn't make the beaver twins. <laughs> I thought you were an atheist. That's right. And that means I can ram this carbon knife through your throat and not go to hell. No, Dad, don't do that. <laughs> Join us again next week for the new Leave it to Beaver. Uh, I'm very happy the charges have been dropped against you. Oh, uh -huh. in a manner of speaking, I is. Well, in a manner... Well, uh, let me ask you something. The question's been uh, puzzling me ever since I heard about the story. What were you doing with baking soda? That's one real good question. Yeah, I... I got to tell you, that's the most expensive sack of baking soda I ever purchased. Was it? Uh-huh. Well, and listen, at least the charges have been dropped and you're a free man. Right? Yeah, that's true. That, that charge was dropped. But I expect in the very near future to be charged with murder. Murder? When I catch up with the dude that sold me that baking soda, it ain't gonna be a pretty sight. Uh, I see. Well... Uh... Tell you something. What? I ain't never paid 40 bucks a gram for baking soda before in my life. And that boy ain't never going to sell it for that again, neither. Well, like inflation, it's uh, killing us all. Even a superstar like you, it's taking yep. its toll. He's going to die, too. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah. I'll leave that up to you, uh, Ike. Thanks for talking with us. Yeah. Tell Tina hi if, right if you ever see no, her No, we don't see each other no more. But if you do run into her, you know, and uh, one of those... I'm going to beat her up. Yeah, one of those baking soda get-togethers. Tell her I said hi. Oh, no, right? right on. Okay. Take care of yourself. Mostly... <laughs> horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. Mmm, how about a little pick-me-upper, Kimosabi? Tonto, bye. I don't need alcohol to pick me up, Tonto. Me either. Not when I have saddlebag full of peyote. <laughs> no, it's funny. It's real funny. Hey, you, barkeep. Your feet nailed to floor or something? Get the lead out, doofus. Uh, you obviously are illiterate. Tonto know who his mama was. Now, the, the sign above the bar there, what's that say up there? Cochise drink pig slop out of spittoon. Uh, uh, no, no, the, the one under that one. Sitting bull where his squaws dress. Uh, on the other side of that one. The only good engine hasn't been born yet. Uh, above that one. We don't serve Indians. Bingo! But me only part Indian. Part Indian? Which part? Th this part. <laughs> <laughs> Why, you no good. Oh, no. Oh, no. Mm. That's Black Bart. That's the meanest man in the territory. Everybody, be quiet, be quiet. Oh, my Tonto, he's heading our way. Uh, you want Tonto to go into his epileptic seizure act? Even Black Bart not shoot sick man. No, no, but have it standing by just in case. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Give me a slow gin fizz with a scoop of banana ice cream and a shot of peppermint schnapps on the side, slick. And I want two, not one. I said two cherries in my fears. Don't you be shortchanging me on my cherries, because I can count, Slick. And if I don't count two of them, I'm going to kick your rear end up around your neck so you have to unzip your pants just to blow your nose, don't you understand? Like I did two days ago to Squatty over there. Hey, Squatty, blow your nose for the gentleman. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, you get going, uh, Slick. Right, I'll get that drink for you. Got, I think got I it. got all day or something. I got things to do. I'm important. Right, brother? Huh? Uh, right, right. Say, what's wrong with your friend? He's just standing there with his mouth hanging open, drooling on the floor. Don't you get no spit on Black Bart's boots. And where, where, where'd you get that mask? 
The boy looks like an albino raccoon, for heaven's sake. Him just thrilled to see Black Bart in person. I hear that. Mm. I hear that. Say, Jim, mm. where's your drink? Uh, they not serve Tonto because he Indian. No. Mm. No. Mm. No. Mm. No, that, that can't be. Mm. That can't be. Mm. Bartender. Bartender. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, they sense a disaster coming. I like that effect. Uh, uh, yes, that's sir. That's good on the crowd. Good uh, on the crowd. Uh, uh, Black Bart, can I do something? This gentleman here. Yes. Has just informed me uh -huh. that he has been denied service. Is that in fact, and if so, why? Oh, well, uh, it's just uh, an oversight. I, I can assure you of that. Under no problem there. Well, I... Get my man a drink. Right, right. And take Ooh. down those sides above the bar there. I, I don't know what they say, but I don't think I like them. Yeah, yes, sir. I'll, do, I'll take care of that. Well, I got to go get me some hormones drained out of my neck. See you around, brother. I don't. Mm. 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 What y'all looking at? Mm. What y'all looking at? Look at me! Mm. Would you be looking at me? Oh, thank uh, goodness that's over, Tonto. Did you see that, Kimosabi? Black really is beautiful. Oh, uh, Tonto, I think what happened here today has sped up the quest for racial equality. I believe Indians will now be given their rightful respect. Mm, me too, Kimosabi. All right, finish your drink and get out of here, you filthy redskin. Get out of here, come on. Then again, Kimosabi. It may be a few more years. Uh, it could maybe be. many years. Wanna play catch? Nice throw, Beef. Nah, I threw my shoulder out yesterday. Throwing baseballs? Now rocks through old man Greeley's windows. <laughs> Gosh, Eddie, you shouldn't do that to Mr. Greeley. Hey, he's the one that called the cops on me and Lumpy just for setting fire to some guy's car. He didn't even know the guy. I hope he dies. Is that the same car that contained the family of four? Ah, they were creeps, Wally. Real jerks. They, they cut me off from the freeway, you know, and this voice inside my head said, Torch him. <laughs> Gosh, that's totally weird, All Eddie. Right. <laughs> I'm talking mega macabre. <laughs> Hello, boy, Beave. Nice toss. Yeah, for a one-armed Girl Scout. <laughs> Come on, Eddie. Hey, Beave, who taught you to throw like that, Betty Crocker? <laughs> Watch this one. Boo! Hey, take your mama's bra off. Maybe you'll throw better. Oh, yeah? Watch this, Eddie. Oh, yeah, well, ladies and gentlemen, the mighty beaver's into his wind-up. Hey, it looks more like a seizure. Come on, Beave. You can do it. Stand back. Here it comes. Here's the pitch. <laughs> Manny, Mo, and Jack, Beaver, you broke Mom's kitchen window. Oh, no! Oh, that was real good. Get over here, mucus brains. Dad, I'll shut up before I dismantle your freakish body. I think you should know that your mother was preparing dinner behind that window, and when you broke it, she rammed a vegematic halfway up her nose. Dad. Now, I thank you for halting one of June Cleaver's up from the bowels of hell culinary delights, but I'm still going to extract my pound of flesh. Wally, my dear son, let me kiss your forehead, and then please go to your room. Just witnessing the carnage that is about to happen could leave lasting emotional scars. Can I have those instead of the physical ones? Shut up! E e Eddie, you, you can stay. I, I don't think this will bother you at all. Thank you, Mr. Cleaver. I'll obey your wishes, my father. Good luck, Beaver. Sure. There he is! Kill him! Kill him! S sir, sir, settle down, Jude. Beaver, go inside and remove all clothing. Yes, sir. Now! Yes, sir! Make him hurt, Ward. I will, pussycat. Of course, I, I can remember when Wally broke a window once. Yeah, I remember that. And accidents will happen. We know that. That's how we got the beaver. That's true. Well, why don't you just scold him and send him to his room? Ah, uh, good idea. I think I should mention here that prior to tossing that ball, Beaver said he was going to throw it into that window with the hopes of blinding the lovely Mrs. Cleaver with the glass. I want to kill him? Join us again next week for the new Leave It to Beaver. Hey, you better. Okay. Moto Madness. Moto Madness is a white powder that has the appearance and texture of salt, but continued use by your family members results in some permanent and hilarious results. The first week, family members begin walking stooped over. Second week, a hump begins appearing on their backs. Third week, the hump gets larger, and one eye begins closing, and the nose enlarges and begins oozing. Whoa. Fourth week, the face begins drooping, the mouth slobbers, the ears run, the eyes discharge, and speech is incoherent. Listen to that. Fifth and final week, uh -huh. splotches, wrinkles, and hair appear over the entire body, and an uncontrollable urge to root for Notre Dame and ring bells overtakes the victim. Yes, your family will be the talk of the neighborhood, and Moto Madness comes with an insult book to help you abuse use your family members with lines like, Hey, do you need to see a chiropractor or are you smuggling bowling balls? Yes, Moto Madness. Only $212, an exclusive product from the London and Engelman 
Christmas gift catalog. A fiery horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver. The Lone Ranger. Well, maybe you're right, Tonto. Maybe we should get a job, but just long enough to get money so we can go back to fighting crime. Mm, Tonto looked forward to the day crime becomes sophisticated enough so that as law enforcement officers, we can be on take. Well, I guess we should ask this gentleman over there. Mm. Uh, come on. Yeah. Excuse me, where is the personnel office? The what? The, the department where you go to seek employment. You're looking at it, Hoss. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm the Lone Ranger, and this is my faithful... Buck Malone, my name. Me just wearing this Indian disguise to decoy him out so I can pop a couple of those filthy dust suckers. Uh, nice to meet you, Buck. Uh, you're welcome to hire on, but your little fat nasally sister there is going to have to beat it. Sister? Oh, no, sir. I'm old man. I'm a rough and mm. you will. Maybe not so rough, mm. but I'm always ready. Ready for what is the question? Now, we bed down one to a sleeping bag there, Pudgy. No funny stuff allowed. Well, certainly, of course, that's the way. All right, I'll give you boys a try. Mm -hmm. Two bits a day and an extra 20 bucks at the end of the drive. Well, is transportation provided? You're sitting on it. Oh, I see. Well, what about a comprehensive medical plan? Here's your medical plan. You fall off that horse there in the middle of that herd over there, and you're going to eat so many hooves, St. Peter's going to need a week just to iron out your face. Oh. Now, go on over there and introduce yourself to the boys. Uh, you're just in time for lunch. Bye. Mm, uh, thanks, Hoss. Let's go, Kimo Sabi. You know, the boys over there. I hope, well, they're, I hope they're nice. I hope they're nice. Remember, Kimo Sabi, these are crusty old trail hands. Try to relate. Oh, I, I will. Mm. Uh, hello, boys. I'm the Lone Ranger, and this is... Buck. Well, uh, so, uh, what's your opinion of supply-side economics? <laughs> okay. All right, that's one. Any other comments on mm. that? Uh, you boys hear one about one-legged Indian with a pelican on his head? No, I hear it. No, no, I hear it. What is it? Well, it seems this mangy redskin walks over to... Uh, All right, back to work. Buck, you and the mm. missus there, uh, take this and brand that calf over there. Mm. Wait, wait, excuse me, excuse me, hold it, wait just one second. You want us to take that red-hot poker there and ram it onto that little baby cow? Yep. Well, that's cruel, heartless, barbaric... And fun, we love to do it. Uh, we'll be right back. Come on, Kimosabe. Wait, Tonto. Here, here. I'll hold the calf steady like this, and you stick the branding iron on its rump there. Well, okay, but I'm not going to look. Mm. Uh, you, you, you tell me when. Now, Kimosabe. 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 Yes? Kimosabe. Yes, Tato. <clears throat> you stuck the branding iron on my rear end. Oh, I'm so sorry. Mm. Oh, I'm so sorry, Tato. Sure. Okay, that's it. You're both fired. Get your stuff and clear out of here. Pete, safe. Oh, you are. Tato, I'm, al I'm afraid I let us down again. Mm. I'm so sorry. It's okay, Kimosabe. Tonto just wished it quarter inch lower. Why? That way it'd cover up ugly mole on Keister. Well, at, le at least it's a nice looking brand. Mm. If you into happy faces. It well, it's the happy face corral, you know. We should have known that going into it. Who is sponsoring this hour's newscast? Oh, boy. Well, it's been a couple of weeks since we've uh, last chatted. That's true. Where have you been? Uh, back east, selecting my porkers for the 83 kill. Oh, uh -huh. back east, where all of Farmer John's uh, porkers come from. They are bred back east and shipped out here live. Right. You're kind of like that guy on the coffee commercial who goes around selecting just the finest beans and all that kind of thing, right? Exactly, exactly. Real, real picky. Are you? What, are <clears> your, what is your requirement for, to uh, making it a uh, farmer John Porker? I have four hard basic rules. And they have to meet all of these standards. That's right. Oh, that's very, very interesting. What are they? Well, number one, yeah. have at least three of its four legs. Mm -hmm. Number two, mm -hmm. take a breath every minute or two. Number three, no open sores on the hide. And number four, nothing green oozing out of the snout. My gosh. Four tough rules that Farmer John follows with each and every porker he selects. Oh, just imagine, not everybody's like that. That's right. Gentlemen. Not everybody is, has the same high standard of quality built into their selection of porkers. Well, Farmer John, we as the eating public thank you heartily. Yeah, you're very welcome. <laughs> Especially number four. Mm. Okay. Yeah, well, okay. listen, you know, with, uh. with Christmas coming up, you know, the, the traditional ham at Christmas time, of course, is standard in many families. Mm. And you can uh, pick up a Farmer John delicious smoked, fully cooked ham. They come in shank and butt portions. Mm. What is, I know what the butt portion, what is the shank portion? Anything that falls off the butt portion. During the dismantling process. Yeah, yeah. Well, Farmer
Hammer John Fine products are featured this week at all your favorite markets. Computer game from the London and Engelman Christmas catalog. I know, I know, you've seen the Atari commercials and they have their computer game, Help E.T. Get Home. Well, in the E.T. DOA game, the object is to shoot E.T. down with anti-aircraft guns, drag him out of the ship, hit him with a shovel, drive a stake through his heart, and steal his ship. Because that's when the adventure really begins. Because your children will receive 2,000 bonus points for going to E.T.'s home and killing his mother with a taser gun. Yes, oh, your oh. children will scream with joy when they actually hear Mrs. E.T. beg for her slimy little life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yes, and when she gets that taser gun. Oh, your kids will... Yes, 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 the realistic sounds. Yes. Oh. Oh, listen to that. Listen to that great computer sound. Like a really croaking. Yeah, well, that, that'll teach your children that killing outer space beings is fun. E.T. DOA, only $279.95 from the London and Engelman Christmas catalog. Oh, what a great gift. I like that one a lot. Sounds like a good gift, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, really. I don't think I can it hits, uh, hits home here. I, Ron, I you have some? I'm, yeah, oh, you betcha. Right here on page 369. Ride that wave. $8,455.51 for the surfer in your life. Ride that wave is the realization of a dream. A chance, chance to hang tin like it's never been hung before. Just think what a thrill it'll be for that blonde beach bum in your life when he's taken aboard a private Learjet wearing his favorite OP shorts and carrying his brand new surfboard, and he takes off for the ride of a lifetime. He'll be flown to an area where a tidal wave is forming. Think of the excitement as he looks down and sees that wave of his life as he straps on the parachute, grabs his board, and Geronimo's out of the jet. If perchance it's his last ride and he's never found, think about the surfer funeral for an additional $29.50.62 for a total price of $11,951.47. How's that sound to you? How's that? Computer game again. Isn't that how real? Mrs. E.T. begging for her life. Well, these are just a few of the very many, 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 many. There she goes again. There she goes. Got that taser gun again. Boy, just a sample of the many Christmas gift ideas from the London and Engelman Christmas catalog. Oh, that's great, Dad! Oh, there boy. you are! Oh, no. Come here! Uh, but Bemis back. Bemis no, back down! Bemis back down! Bemis back down! Oh, Join us again next time for another exciting episode of Space Patrol! Space Patrol! Dad, you want to see me? Yeah, come on in, son. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, too, Dad. No, no, remember I became Jewish last week. Oh, yeah, well, uh, happy Hanukkah, then. That's all right, I'm not Orthodox. Oh, okay, right. I called you down here tonight, Skippy Jr., for several reasons. Okay. First, I want you to sign this letter I typed up to the Ensign McElroy family. Let's see, uh, dear Mrs. McElroy, Bud, Nancy, and little Arnie. I'm very sorry I dumped over a bucket of nuclear waste on your husband and daddy's head. I thought it was a bucket of lemonade and that pouring it over his head would be a funny prank. It wasn't, and I'm sorry. You might be interested to know that he grew to five times his normal size before we had to launch him out of one of the torpedo tubes due to lack of space. But believe me, your father was a big man in life and even a bigger man in death. Five times bigger. <laughs> That's real good, Dad. I'll just sign yeah. Lieutenant oh, wait. Speed Jr. Wait a minute. There's a P.S. P.S. Yeah. He broke a couple of plates when they were hauling him through the cafeteria. Please remit the twelve ninety five to cover the damages. Totally fair. Sure. Well, I hope the men enjoyed the uh, Christmas Eve meal I had prepared for him. Oh, fart root leaves and gangland meat? Uh -huh. I know they enjoyed it, Dad. It's just too bad the meat was contaminated. I'll tell you, I still don't remember turning the meat freezer off. Must have done it in my sleep last week. Mm -hmm. How the men doing? Twelve dead, 147 critical, 212 violently ill, but in guard condition, 49 in stable condition. Well, it's probably good their minds are diverted from thinking about Christmas away from their families. Yeah, I sure wish we could be with Mom tonight. Yeah. Let's see. This uh, makes 16 Christmases in a row away from Mom. Mm -hmm. What does she look like again? Here, I think I got a picture of her. Yeah, that's her. Her there? No, 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 wait. That's my sister, Carmen. Here. I think that's her there. There? Yeah. <laughs> Take some of the pain out of being away from her, don't it? What a dog, <laughs> I'll say. Hey, I got an idea. What? What do you say we give her a call? Hey, sure. <laughs> She's probably all by herself feeling kind of lonely, Oh, you know? this will be great, Dad. <laughs> I can't wait to say hello to Mom. 16 yeah. Christmases. She'll be glad to hear from us, I think, don't I you? I, I'm sure she will, Dad. I'm sure she will. <laughs> hello? Hello? Uh, is, is, uh, Mrs. Skippy there? Oh, no. Mrs. Skippy! Uh, she can't come to the phone. She's bobbing for amphetamines and the morphine solution. Bye. Hmm. <laughs> Sounds like uh, she has a few friends over from the church. Oh, that's good. Well, son, uh, 
How about a Christmas toast? Hey, great, Dad, sure. Here's, here's a couple of eggnogs. Uh, I perked mine up with some uh, rubbing alcohol and a shot of pain numb and liniment. That's yours there. Okay, that, okay. Yeah. thanks, Dad. Well, yeah. here's to a great 2183. Yeah. Cheers. Lachheim. <laughs> Tasted a little weak. Oh, oh babies. Oh, babies. Oh, no. Wrong glass. Oh, my gosh. Not on the rug, son. <gasps> Not a, uh, you, you stay here. I, I'm going to the officer's lounge. Uh, Merry Christmas and, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, shalom. Join us again next time for another exciting episode of Space Patrol. It's us. Desperate. Sick, desperate people. I see them all the time in this business, and there's one thing that nauseates me about them. Fear. It's all over them like a disease. I can smell it on them. I can see it on them. And it's written all over their disgustingly desperate faces. But there are two things I like about them. One, they'll do anything I ask. And two, I can usually gouge them for more than my normal $200 a day plus expenses. Three weeks ago, I ran into one of these horrendously desperate people. I was shellacking my pet Gerbil, which had died suddenly after I'd attempted to give it a tan with a sun lamp when this guy comes on in. <laughs> Mr. Woman? Yeah. Mr. Dan Woman? Yeah. Mr. Dan Woman, Private Eye? Yeah. Hey, I sound like the Beatles. What do you want, pal? I need your help, Mr. Woman. Yeah? The mob is after me. Yeah. I, I couldn't pay back a loan shark debt, and now they want to kill me. And you got no questions as to why I'm shellacking this dead gerbil? None whatsoever. You are desperate. Yes, sir, I am. I take it you need some protection. Yes, sir, till, till I get the money. Till I, and I'll pay him back, and then I need protection till then. All right. Here's where I applied the gouge. I charge $217 a day plus expenses. Yes, sir. Plus a mystery charge at the completion of the case. Mystery charge? What is this? Forget the mystery charge. All right. I settled for the $17 extra. All right. But I'll tell you something, Ace. You stiff me like you did the mob, and you'll have to hire them to protect you from me. Yes, sir. I understand that, sir. Do everything I say. No questions. And maybe, just maybe, I'll get you out of this thing alive or just slightly maimed. Okay, that's fine. I'll take it. Okay, first, take this shellac gerbil and bury it. Yes, sir. Then go to this address and tell them Dan Woman Private Eye sent you. Right. I'll be by to check on you this evening. Thank you so much. I'm yeah. Get it. Get out of here. <clears throat> I gave him my brother's address in Van Nuys. I had to swing by later to pick up his gremlin anyway, so it worked out pretty good. About four that afternoon, I decided to give him a call to check in. <clears throat> do -do -do. Hello. Yeah. Clyde? This is Clyde Woman. Hey, hey, it's me, Dan. How's my friend doing? My friend, Dan. The guy I sent by. He, nobody came by, Dan. He didn't? Nobody came by. Well, wait a second. Wait, is your address 2159 Baltic Way? No, uh, uh, 3745 Sherman Way. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, no. What's, 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 what's the matter? <laughs> You're not going to believe this, Clyde. What? <laughs> I, sent him, I sent him to my bookie by mistake. <laughs> and, and my bookie <laughs> belongs to the mob. <laughs> due to a severe case of asthma. But my hunch proved to be correct. He had gone to my bookie who recognized him and held the guy at gunpoint till the mob's torture squad arrived. It got kind of messy after that. Good taste and the FCC laws prohibit me going into detail. However, pictures and audio tapes are available through my bookie, Sid. Just call me. I'm Dan Woman, Private Eye. And this is my city, Los Angeles. All right, let's go to the phone here. Good morning. Welcome to Bad Advice. This is Johnny from El Monte. I'm eight years old, and I was wondering what I should be when I grow up. Well, Johnny, that's a very good question. Hi, this is Dr. Malcolm Hebes. Call me Dr. Malcolm. First of all, are you right or left-handed, Johnny? Left, Dr. Malcolm. Oh, that's too bad. Huh? All perverts, winos, bums, molesters, drug addicts, crazy psychopaths, and topless bar bouncers are left-handed. Really? That's right, Johnny. I'm afraid left-handed people are morally inferior and intellectually stupid. If you don't wind up face down in the gutter, wallowing in garbage, fighting rats for pieces of half-eaten food, you might think about doing something menial with your hands for minimum wage. But, Dr. Malcolm, I, I wanted to be a fireman. Oh, my, my, no. Goodness gracious, no. They'd never let a lefty around fires. Uh, forget that, Johnny. Bye-bye now. <laughs> Give that horrible advice, great. Super, super. One more here. Good morning, Magic. 106. Yes, uh, my wife Nan and I are having a serious problem communicating with each other. We, we seem to be uh, drifting uh, apart, Dr. Bofstein. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, how 
some gross guy like what a total bar found. I mean, how tubular can you people get? Like, just go out and quit being so gnarly and stop gagging each other with eating utensils. Right. Uh, thanks. You've, you've really helped. Oh, I'm sure. Boy, you've helped me a lot. One more. Let's see if we can get an etiquette question here. Good morning, Magic 106. Bad advice. Hello, bad advice. Hello, bad advice. Uh, oh. Dr. Gutlopper, I have uh, one of your uh, etiquette type questions. Yeah, hey, hold on just one stinking minute here. Uh, with whom am I speaking? This would be your Lyle Goatnobber. Uh, and the question is, Dr. Gutlopper. Goatnobber, Gutlopper. Hey, come, we, on, come, come on, come on, come on. I want the question. Sure, I know what my name is. Men like people still open doors for women uh, like people. Heck no, heck no. Hey, they want to be equal? Treat them like it. Uh -huh. Just go on through the door first, and if she stays back like uh, Princess Grace, may she rest in peace. Certainly, Just amen. say, uh, are your arms broke? You got arthritis or something? Get your can in here before I bruise your spleen. That's good, thank See, you. Then later, uh -huh. uh, just so there's no hard feelings, you know, buy her a box of chiclets so her breath don't stink. Hey, thank you very much for answering that. You're welcome. Hey, bye now. Yeah, goodbye. Whoa! Hey, some heavyweight counseling this morning. Be sure and join us again next time for another edition of Bad Advice. Others as the beaver. Take your seats, dorks. As you know, your assignment was to present a short oral report on your father's. Whitey, you first. Yes, Miss Landers. My father, Whitey Woodrow Jr., is a very powerful man. He was a captain in the Marines and was given many awards for his ability to defoliate jungles and torture POWs. He is also a very smart man because he is in the 80% tax bracket and we live like veritable kings in our gorgeous and spacious ranch-style home. Thank you, Whitey. Your old man sounds like a real trip. All right, Beaver, let's hear about yours. Yes, Come on up, slug brains. Yes, ma'am. Well, my dad's real strong, too. He can, um... Uh... Crush beer cans? <laughs> No, no, he, he is strong. He he, he can p p p pick up a car. Miss Landers? Larry Mandela, what is it? The beaver's lion. His old man's a drunk, and the only thing he can pick up is an Amway bourbon bottle. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. It's not. All right, let's just find out who's telling the truth. Let's go over to the Gunzel's house and find out if Mr. Cleaver can pick up a car. But whoever's lying will have to wear this campfire girl's uniform for one week. Fine with me. Yeah. Me too, I, I think. 30 minutes later. Ah, I'll get it. Oh, hello, hello, Miss Landers. Uh, I, I was just thinking about you, babe. You were. Yeah, yeah, but don't tell Jude, okay? Oh, <laughs> hi, kids. Hi, you drunk piece of garbage. Hi, you pizza snack. You drunk and stinking bum. Ah, uh, they're so well-mattered, Miss Landers. You, you really should be proud. Uh, Mr. Cleaver, is that your 65 Chevrolet Biscayne in the driveway? Yeah, yeah. But, but I can explain that little hit-and-run deal last night. No, just come on out. We'd like to see you pick it up. Oh, oh okay, uh, I'll try. You can do it, Dad. Well, if I do pick it up, I'm going to drop it on your face, rooster breath. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 let's see here. I'll just grab hold of the bumper. Mr. Cleaver, take your hands off of me. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, oh, okay, here goes. Come on, Dad. Come on, Dad, you can do it. Come on, Dan. Come on, give it a try. Come on, Dan. Come on. Come on. Oh, I, I think I better stop. Why? I'm about to pass gas. <laughs> oh, sorry, everybody. Bye. Oh, Beaver. Gosh. Beaver. Yes, Miss Landers? I hope you can fit into this size four. Oh, no. Oh, my back. My aching back. Why is the beaver putting on a campfire girl's dress? Who knows what possesses that sick mind? One thing we do know, though, June. What? He's got your leg. Oh, yeah, pieces. <laughs> Join us again next week for the new Leave it to Beaver. For the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Well, I get some supplies. Why don't you go into the saloon and get a beer? Mm, okay, Kimosabi. Of course, they just ridicule and insult Tonto for being Indian. Oh, now, yeah, go ahead. I'll see you in a few minutes. Mm, don't forget pizza rolls. I won't. I'll be in here. Hey, bartender. Yes, sir. I suppose you don't serve Indians, right? No, oh, your money's good here, my Indian friend. Quit sucking up, you two-bit phony wall-eyed carp. Uh, right, right. Here's your uh, beer there, mister. What'd you do, spit in it, you hanyak slime ball? You're an Apache, right? What is this, name that Indian? Get out of my face before I use your beak-like nose to clean the cut out of my horse's teeth. Oh, gee, that's not nice. Aren't there any white women in this dung pit? I'm right here, Angel. Hey, bartender, you serve slop in here? Well, no. Then what this pig doing at bar? Well, how rude. Hmm, so's your breath, you wart-faced old slug. So I took old Jake and I slammed his stinking head right into the barn. <laughs>
<laughs> You're real tough, Lord, but... What was that? Your dime store heroics might impress these wimps, but you make Toto want to heave up this morning's coffee cake. You want to try me, Redskin? I wouldn't get my hands dirty, but there's a man who's going to walk through those doors in a few minutes who could reach down your throat and rip out your lower tract before you could beg for your sleazy life. Who is this guy? The Lone Ranger. Uh Uh-huh. Of course, you may already know him. He tell me just five minutes ago he had to pistol whip your mama to keep her from taking the feed bag off his horse. Well, I'm going to kill him! I'm Mm going to kill him! We'll see. Oh, hi, Tonto. I see you've made some new friends. Mm. Are you the Lone Ranger? And when he wakes up, you tell him if I ever see him in this town again, I'll kill him. Sure, sure. Kimosabi. 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 Vicious people, Kimosabi. Tonto not know what this world come to. Why, where am I? No, you wouldn't believe the abuse I had to take before you come in. Oh. Brutal, sick people. Oh, they're sick disgusting. people in this town. Mm, disgusting people. L.A., battleship of Southern California, in another exciting episode of Space Patrol. Captain's log, stardate 907.23. No, wait, that's my zip code. Well, whatever. This is truly one of the darkest days ever in the voyage of the SS L.A. Having lost a vicious space battle with the Magadites, they have placed our ship into a tracking beam and they're pulling us in tow back to their planet. In the meantime, they're forcing us to perform humiliating and degrading acts under the penalty of torture. They forced my son, Lieutenant Skippy Jr., to put on a pink and blue dress and wear high heels. Dad, can I shave my legs in your bathroom? Ah, shut up for crying out loud. And learn how to walk in those things. Anyway... Through this entire nightmare, I have been able to maintain my dignity and self-respect. My continuing goal to the bitter end. Captain Skippy, out. Dad, it's the Magadite captain on the communicator. What do you want? Do your little song, Captain. Son, leave the room. What he's about to hear isn't fit for your young ears. All right, Dad, I... Oh! You're crying out loud. I'll just crawl out, Dad. I think so. All right, Captain, listen real good. I'm listening. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, here is my spout. And what do we do when we want a little drink? Dip me Me over, over. pour me out. Good boy. Seven back for the captain. Come on. Seven back, back. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. I'll be back in touch, Captain. Yeah, right. Did you tell him off real good, Dad? (laughs) Yeah, I did. Uh, Hey. What's this on the floor here? Oh, it's one of my dress shields, Dad. Sorry. Oh, for Pete's sake. Dad, what are we going to do? Son, it's hopeless. We're gunners. It'd take some sort of miracle. Dad, what's that package over in the corner here? I don't know. It came in this morning. Dad! Huh? It's an anti-tracking beam device. We could plug this thing in and be out of here before the Meganites know what happened. Let's do it, son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dad, Dad. Huh? Wait a second. What? This is just a pathetic, cheap script ending. Instead of a complicated, sophisticated, intriguing ending, the writers came up with this preposterous coincidence. An anti-tracking beam device in the corner. Come on! Yeah, you're right. And by plugging it in, we'd only be condoning their sophomoric writing ability. That's right, Dad. Forget it. Let's just take what comes, okay? Captain? (laughs) Yeah? What does a cocker spaniel sound like when it plays with a cricket? Plug it in, son. All right, Dad, I got you. And then uh, put in a call through to the writer's guild. Okay, go on, Dad. Yeah? Can I wear this stuff till we get back to the base? No, you sick piece of garbage. Dad, I think I got toxic shock syndrome. Oh, my God! Join us again next time for another exciting episode of Space Patrol. In L.A., filled with funny people. Not ha-ha funny, but odd, twisted, warped funny. Take last Thursday. I was at my desk gluing sandwich meat to the underside of my desk for an emergency supply when in walked this gorgeous hunk of flesh from the female persuasion. Excuse me, are you the den woman? If I'm not, I ought to be. It was a good line. I thought it up that morning while I was gluing cereal flakes on my belt. And may I have a seat? Be my guest. She was an eight or even a nine in all legs. Not literally, of course. That'd be grotesque or freaky. I have the problem. I'm all ears. Here again, I don't mean literally. I have the problem, monsieur, that is driving me crazy and will not go away. Herpes. I was blunt. 
she was blunter. Don't be an imbecile. I have come to your country to purchase a rare painting. However, certain men may try to steal it from me before I get back to my country. I want you to purchase the painting and protect it until I am ready to leave. I'm all yours. Not literally, of course, because... Am I overdoing this? Bye. Here's the cashier's check for 1.5 million dollars. The painting is by Salvador Dali. Hello, Dali. Here is the address of the art gallery, but please, promise me, you will keep this confidential. There is too much money involved for loose lips. You got my word as a professional. I took the check and decided to stop off for a beer before going to the museum. Yeah, that's the check. One and a half mil. That's her name right there. Ain't that something? Never I arrived at the art gallery in Beverly Hills around three that afternoon. Are you interested in a painting, sir, or did you simply wish to use our bathroom? Nope. I'm interested in a picture, and I like my art like my meat. Rare. Mm. I'm here for that picture for Mrs. Dubois. Oh, yes, the doll. Yes. Here it is, right here. <laughs> Get serious. <laughs> that piece of garbage goes for one and a half million dollars? <laughs> Looks like he was on drugs or something. Sir, this is a masterpiece. <laughs> masterpiece? <laughs> the picture over my sofa with the dogs playing poker. You know, you know the one with the bulldog smoking a cigar and holding some cards in his paw under the table? Mm. That's a masterpiece. This here's a crapification of the word. I can I for Dan Woman, Private Eye. Yeah, that's me, Dan Woman, Private Eye. And this is my city, Los Angeles. That's me, all right. Dan Woman, SX4719TL5. That's what it says on my California State Private Investigator's License. But what that license doesn't tell you about are the nights spent waiting in the cold and rain, or having the barrel of a 38 snub nose stuck in your ribs, or dodging some tough guy's right cross in a dark alley, or jumping out of the way of a 78 Pontiac with your name on the front bumper, or having a pool cue slammed across the back of your head. If those things happened to me, no. But they all happened to Jim Rockford, and I didn't miss an episode. And if they can happen to him, they can happen to me, because I got more guts than a slaughterhouse floor. As a matter of fact, one of my toughest cases happened around this time of the year a couple years back. I call it the case of the missing Santas. Yeah? Seems a chain of department stores here in Los Angeles were having their department store Santas disappear. I won't mention the chain because they canceled my credit card. But anyway, I posed undercover as a Santa Claus to find out what was happening. All right, next. Hi, Shelly. Ah, uh, jump up here on my knee, kid. Uh, okay. Hi, Shelly. Yeah, right. What's your name, kid? Jimmy. Jimmy. Huh? Hey, Shelly. Why are you in here? They all died. They came down with the mange and croaked. Oh. Oh, what about those elves? Santa, where are those elves? They're all in prison. 20 to life for drunken disorderly conduct. Gosh. Yeah. Now, uh, what do you want for Christmas, punk? I want a, I want a 10 speed bicycle, Mr. Claus. Forget it. But that's what, that's what I want. Tough. You ain't getting it. But, but, but. You're getting underwear and sweat socks. That's it. Oh, hey, get this kid out of here. Go on, beat it. Take <laughs> off. Wham. <laughs> Shut up. All right. Next. I guess I'm next. Yeah. Huh? Jump up here on my knee. Okay, a boy. All right, what's your name? My name's Sid, Santa. Sid. Does your mommy know you smoke cigars? She sure does. Uh, you got one for Santa? I sure do. All here. right, that's good. Line it up, Santa. Yeah, enjoy that, Santa. So what do you want for Christmas, Sid? Oh, maybe some more bullets for this guy that got stuck in your Ooh. ribs. Now watch it there, Sid. This ain't a bowl full of jelly. That's my flesh. Start hitting for the exit, Santa. Hey, wait a second. You're not little kid. You're sleazy, Sid Sleeza. That's right, Santa. And you're 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 the one who's been kidnapping all the Santas. That's right, Fatso, and you're next. Hey, hey, look, look. There's Rudolph sucking a parking meter. Where? I don't see. Over there. What ensued was one of the most vicious department store fistfights since Sears caught Roebuck with his hand in the till. But in the end, Sleazy Sid had had enough. I've had enough. I've had enough. Okay, somebody call the police. So tell me, Sid, why you've been kidnapping all the Santas? Because when I was little, I asked a department store Santa for a train set, and I never got one. I promised myself someday I'd get even. I see. Hang on a second. Hey, kid, what, come here. What do you get? Come here. Why? On second thought, uh, I'm going to let you have that bicycle. I don't want you coming back sometime and shoot me in the groin or oh, something. Oh, boy, thank you very much. Hey, wait. Huh? You're not Santa. You're huh? Jan Woman. How'd you recognize me? Because during that fight, you lost control of your bladder. 
<laughs> you're right. <laughs> See you later. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Well, Sid was arrested and all the kidnapped Santas were returned unharmed. Except for a couple of Santa suits that Sid took a chainsaw to. Sid's a sick guy. And the department store chain gave me a nice bonus. Of course, 175 of it went for the Schwinn 10-speed. But I look at it as an investment. Because someday, when Jimmy's old enough, he's going to do something sick, get into trouble. And when he does, I'll be here. Because I'm Dan Wolf, Private Eye. And this is my city, Los Angeles. horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Well, I sure wish we could have an omelet or something before we apply for this job, Tonto. Mm, Tonto settled for 200 cc's of Darvon with Morphine Chaser. Well, this is the ranch. Mm. Oh, that must be the owner over there by the, uh, the thing. The corral. Uh, the corral, mm. right. Excuse me, are you Miss Creighton? That's right, Scotty. I'm the boss lady. Yes, well, uh, we're answering this ad right here for cowhands. We... Do you have a gopher in your shorts? Uh, no, no, me, me meaning the Lone Ranger and my faithful Indian companion, Tonto. Did you say faithful? Yes, ma'am. That's a rare commodity around here these days. I had to shoot my husband in the back 12 times because he lacked that trait. I see. That's him over there by that salt lake. Oh, mm, you not bury him, beautiful white woman. You don't bury fertilizer, you spread it. Mm. Where did you get that build, red man? Mm, it's standard equipment. And what happened to yours? Squatty. Well, I was a sickly child, ma'am. Terrible case of rickets till I was 18. Well, I can tell what kind of worker a man is by the way he kisses. You first, Pudgy. Kiss? You lick on the hand? Right on my ruby reds. He's probably a gold during the homo! Nice shot, stud. Drag him over by the salt lake. Mm -hmm. No one called the Lone Ranger a homo and live. Except that guy with the beard in Tucson. Mm, that true. And the big guys in Dodge City, you remember mm. them? And those kids out uh, in the... Uh, let's get on with oh, it. Okay, well, <laughs> just a second now. <clears throat> okay, I'm ready. Okay, here you go. <laughs> Would you bend down just a little bit? Okay. Okay? Oh. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, now you, hot shot. My pleasure. <laughs> Well, well, you just became the foreman. I'm gonna call you Borax. You're a 20 mule team's dead. Mm. But Stumpy, there's gotta go. No, no, no. Let me prove myself, please, please. All right, all right. If you can ride Thunderbuster there, you've got the job. <laughs> the big black horsey. You want the job? Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll be fine. Little I'll does do the Lone wait. Ranger know that he's about to make the biggest mistake of his butt-tingling career. Find out the conclusion later this morning with London and Engelman. <laughs> A fiery horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. Well, I'm ready to ride. Mm, good luck, Kimosabe. Thank you. I'll tell you what, Red, while Squatty gets his brains beat out, why don't you and I have a business conference? Mm, a board meeting. I'm not going to be bored at this meeting. Come here. Mm, well, while well, you're doing that. Okay, boys, I'm settled. Let her rip. Whoa, whoa. light over there you are beyond the veil of death what beyond the you mean i am mm, stiff city kimosabe tonto what are you doing here mm, during board meeting boss lady suck air out of tonto's lungs and they collapse next thing tonto know he's floating down tunnel my goodness tonto do you know who i am mm, great spirit in this happy hunting ground <laughs> don't make me laugh uh, tonto pick wrong religion you try kimosabe uh, uh, i'm a methodist hmm. But I, but I knew a Baptist and I went there Welcome, once. Welcome, my son. Oh, good. Oh, rock of ages. Clef Silence! <clears throat> you are not staying, masked man. You will go back. I will? 
but you lack you courage. Like, I do? You must find courage, and I will make you great among the old West heroes. Who oh, will find that courage? I'll be great. You wait and see. Send me back. Your name will be spoken with reverence. The Cisco Kid. Uh, I'm I'm the Lone Ranger. Uh, isn't that uh, Poncho next to you? Hmm, Tonto. Tonto's his name. Hmm. Mm. Tonto. Uh, Pancho Tonto. What happened to names like Bill or, or Stan or Mike? All right. Here we are. Lone Ranger and Tonto. Mm. Well, I'll, I'll do what I can for you, Squatty. Well, thank you. Thank but you. But I hope Hotshot brought along an asbestos loincloth because he's staying. No, please, sir, please. Uh, we're, we're a team. We're a team. What is he? He's an Indian. Oh. Well, whatever. Take him, leave him. I don't care. Do whatever you want. Tonto be a good Baptist. All right, Tonto. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, well, Tonto, look, we're, we're back on the trail. Mm, Tonto got to cut out that peyote. Bad medicine. Well, let's get you to the First Baptist Church of Amarillo. Mm, give me a break, Kimosabi. Rock of ages, clear to me. me. Let me hide. And woman, private eye. And this is my city, Los Angeles. Tough times call for tough people. It's like my concert promoter friend down at Garden Grove, Crystal Robert Schuler, always says. Tough times don't last, tough people do. Of course, anyone east of Long Beach could take Bob out with one punch, but he's right. That's why these tough economic times are perfect for me, Dan Woman, Private Eye. I know how to survive. When I want a fancy meal out, I don't spend 10 or $15. I go to the back of a nice restaurant and wait for the cook to make a trip to the Dipsy Dumpster. Just like last week, I was out behind the La Di Da, an expensive French restaurant in Bad Eyes. Hey, you the cook? Yeah, what's it to you? Why, you snot-nosed Lugan. I'll bet you ain't man enough to force-feed me a plate of those spinach crepes you serve. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, let's see if I can do it here, you beat All right. Yeah. Ten minutes later. All right, how about that? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Hmm. But I'll bet you ain't got the strength left to force a half pound of cheesecake down my craw. Oh, yeah? Well, you just wait here, fella. Yeah, I'm waiting. Sure, I had to eat a few fists along with the crepes and the cheesecake, but so what? Of course, it's tough to impress a date with that scam, so I use another maneuver. I take her to a fancy restaurant. After we're seated, I tell her that I'm going back to the kitchen to say hi to my friend Pierre. Actually, I go to the bathroom, but when I get back... Oh, did you see Pierre? No, nah, he's not here anymore. What's wrong, Dan? The kitchen's a toilet. There's rats all over the place. Oh, no. Cockroaches the size of your fist. Oh, goodness. The chef's got a cold. He's sneezing in the sauce. One of the bus boys is trimming his nose hairs in the kishi. It's a mess. But hey, this is your night. Dan, can we leave? Go somewhere else? No, I've lost my appetite. I understand. Let's leave. On the rare occasion that one of these bimbos still wants to stay and eat, I excuse myself, go to the payphone, and dial a bomb threat to the restaurant. Grocery stores are another place where you can save big bucks. I do three months shopping at one time. I pull into the checkout aisle with two, maybe three baskets of food. Finally, after 20 minutes of ringing up the register... Okay, here, let's take a look. Uh -huh. $234.95, please. Uh, I'll give you 200 even, not a penny more. Well, uh, would you rather me take a few items back? No, it's all of it or none of it. 200 bucks. Of course, uh, if you'd rather spend two hours putting it all back... Hurry you're... up up there! <laughs> uh, all right, all right, all right, I'll take it this time. But don't you ever come in here again, and I mean that. Don't yeah, you ever I come in here again. Many, many ways to save money. Hi, Ma. You get those flowers I sent you for Valentine's Day? No. What about the candy? Well, I'll be dipped in high-viscosity motor oil. Sorry, Ma. Right. Bye. <laughs> that old Gunsel falls for it every year. <laughs> you know why? Because I'm Dan Woman, Private Eye. And this is my city, Los Angeles. Where all your fantasies can come true. Tattoo! Tattoo! Where is that fat lip, not nose norm? Tattoo! Here I am, Bud. Here I am. Ah, uh, yes. There you are, Tattoo. Yes, Bud. A full 35 inches below my mouth. Yes, Bud. You know, Tattoo, as I look down on your misshapen head with that ugly, coarse, black, greasy hair and that lumpy, snarled body crammed inside that white suit, from up here you look like... like a fat, hairy spider trying to get into a white burlap bag stuffed with dead animals. Yes, Bud. You know, Tattoo? Yes, Bud. They could measure your inseam with a desk ruler. Yes, Bud. 
Now, Tattoo, our guests will arrive shortly. And after they're through pointing and gasping at your twisted body, I want you to make them as comfortable as possible. Who are our guests, Bart? Our first guest is Mr. T. Well, what is his fantasy? His fantasy is to learn how to spell his name. Yes, Bart? And then he wants to act out his version of Snow White and the Seven Unruly Dwarfs. He's Snow White. Yes, and you will play the unruly dwarf. Oh, no. That crate of implements over there with the drill bit, frog gigger, pickaxe, and what have you will be his punishment box. Oh, no. Shut up, you filthy little grimy thing, and you'll do exactly what I tell you or I'll make you happen to death. Shut up. I said shut up. Our second guest will be Pope John Paul II. Oh, God! Yes, a man of love, a man of peace. And what is his fantasy? To call cock a midget with a meat hammer. Oh, no. It's very strange, oh, Tattoo. Come on, give me a break here. Come on. I'd get out my worry beads if I were you, Tattoo. Give me a break here. Our third guest is recently resigned Israeli Defense Minister Ariel Sharon. What's his fantasy? To go one-on-one -on -one with Yasser Arafat. But where will you get Yasser Arafat? That's your camel over there. Oh, no! It takes a slime ball to play a slime ball. Give me a stinking break here! Our last guest, famed firefighter Red Adair. What's his, what's his fantasy? To extinguish a flaming midget. Oh, come on! I don't understand it, Tattoo. Come on! That was not my Come idea. Come back again real soon for another, another visit to Catalina Island. Beaver, starring Jerry Mathers as the Beaver. I dread those four words all day long. Oh, what you doing? Well, let's see if we can figure it out. I'm in the kitchen. I'm cutting up what looks like a carrot, and there's a bowl of green stuff next to it. You're making dinner. And I thought you were retarded. What's the green stuff, Mom? The insides of something I found in the garden. If the good Lord's gonna take the time to bring it to our yard, who are we to say no? Yeah, yeah. I got a B today on my English test, Mom. Wally got an A on his. Yeah, but Miss Landers thanked me for not wetting my pants all week long. Wally never wet his pants. I pooted him out, toilet trained. Yeah. Where's Dad, Mom? What do I look like, Gene Dixon? I don't know. Try his office. Okay, I'll try the Bobby's. Thanks, thanks, Mom. All right, good, good. The next time I see that little creep, I'm going to kill him. I, I mean it, I mean it. Oh, no. I just hope that poison you gave me works. Oh, good now. Good, because after today, there's going to be one less pest around the old Cleaver house. Yeah, goodbye. I better leave. Oh, no. Jude, Jude, that was Bill from the nursery. I'm gonna go put that poison down the gopher hole in the backyard. Why don't you just breathe down it? Why don't you shut up? Yeah, you why don't you? Yeah. Meanwhile, at the Eddie Haskell house. Ah, uh, well, what do you want? I'm Beaver Cleaver, Miss Haskell. Is Eddie home? Eddie, some darky looking kid wants you. MSB Beaver. <laughs> yeah, he is you. What do you want, creep? I'm running away from home. Where should I go, Eddie? <laughs> Skid Row, Rover, Skid Row. How do I get there? I say you're mad for a buck, punk. Okay, Eddie, here, here's a dollar. Tell me how I get there because I'm running away for good. I mean it. Good yet to you, little snut ball. <laughs> Will the beaver really go to Skid Row? Find out later this morning with London and Engelman. Aboard the...